Hello everybody, welcome to the King is Coming broadcast. I'm Sam Duval. It's such a honor to come to you through this video broadcast. It's going to be an incredible time of learning the scripture about the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. The King is coming. Yes, He is coming soon. Jesus Christ, Yeshua the Messiah, He is coming very, very, very soon. Amen. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you. We worship you. We adore you, Lord. For who you are, Lord, you are so faithful to each one of us. Thank you for this uh, opportunity, Lord, to broadcast to the entire world to proclaim the King is coming, to prepare your people for your coming, Lord. Thank you, Father. We give you praise. We give you all the glory. And thank you for your son, Yeshua. Thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross for us. He died for your sin and my sin. What a graceful, graceful God. We thank you, Jesus, for your blood, for your sacrifice. We honor you. Holy Spirit, anoint us as we learn from you, Lord. Speak to us today. Prepare us for your coming. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. What a glorious God we serve. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. His son, Yeshua, the Yeshua, the Messiah. Hallelujah. is an awesome God. Everything written in His Word is coming to pass so accurately. Hallelujah. Science is catching up with the Word of God. That's amazing to know that many of the scientific uh, uh, confirmations and, you know, findings is just proves that Bible is the one true God, one true Bible is the Word of God. Amen? Hallelujah. Today we're going to see an important uh, insight into the timings that we are living in. Today's broadcast title is, Are We the Last Generation? Are We the Last Generation? Amen? Why am I asking this question? Because the Bible tells that we might be the last generation according to the words of Jesus. You need to understand the Bible is 90% prophecies. It's all prophecies that has been fulfilled before. It is being fulfilled and it also will be fulfilled with 100% accuracy. So let's start with the word of the Lord from Matthew chapter 24. This is the most important chapter for our generation where Jesus gave some amazing insights into the time we live in. Because whatever you see in this world is really connecting to the words that Jesus spoke in Matthew chapter 24. Let's read from Matthew chapter 24 verse uh, 1 to 3. Then Jesus went out and departed from the temple and his disciples came up to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said to them, Do you not see all these things? I should lay say to you, Not one stone shall be left here upon another that shall not be thrown down. Here the disciples were showing Jesus the temple. In Jerusalem, it is an amazing temple, uh, awesome, awesome architecture. Also, it is the most important place for the Jewish spiritual life. It's the spiritual center of the whole world for the Jewish people. So, temple is most important uh, also for Jesus at the time when he was living in the earth because he taught in the temple, and he also he went and worshipped God in, uh, in during the feasts of the Lord, during Passover, during Pentecost, during all these feasts of the Lord, he went and worshipped the Lord. So temple is very important. Then he was, the, the, the disciples were showing what a great temple. The presence of the Lord is here. Everything was going fine because the temple was in Jerusalem, in Israel. Everything will work good for the Jewish people. That's a belief. But uh, the answer from Jesus was mind-boggling for them. Let's read one, once again. Then Jesus went out and departed from the temple and the disciples came up to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said to them, Do you not see all these things? I should lay say to you, Not one stone shall be left here upon another that shall not be thrown down. So you need to understand that the statement that Jesus said is, is amazing for the disciples. It is like somebody coming to the church and telling all the church will be destroyed, you know. So that's what it would have been, you know, when disciples hear this uh, message from Jesus. Then they got excited and then, Lord, when is going to happen? All these things. So they asked very important three questions from verse 3. Now as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, Tell us when will these things be and what will be the sign of your coming and the end of the age? There are three questions, important questions. Tell us when will these things be, when will the temple will be destroyed? The second question is, and what will be the sign of your coming? What will be the sign of your coming to take the church home? And the third question is, and what will be the sign of the end of the age? So we're going to explore from the scriptures how it accurately fulfilled so far 
and how it's going to be fulfilled in our generation according to the words of Jesus Christ. Do you need, do you need to know what the most important news story of our generation will be? It is going to be the taking away of the church and the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's a world, world shaking event that's going to happen. It's important that you understand as a believer in Jesus Christ, how you have to be prepared when these things happen. What will happen to your business, your family, economy in the world? You must be prepared. Jesus Christ is literally going to come back to Jerusalem on top of the Mount of Olives to begin governing the entire earth. He's going to land on Mount of Olives and he's going to rule from Jerusalem as King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. But you can know what the signs will be during the time of his coming from the words of Jesus himself. Hallelujah. But an important thing that you and me need to understand is Luke chapter 21 verse 36. While we are waiting for His coming in, this, in our generation, Luke chapter 21 verse 36, Jesus said this most important statement for all of us. He said, Watch therefore and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. Amen. Hallelujah. This is not a statement. It's a command. God said, Pray always. Watch Watch what you're going to watch. You're going to watch what the Lord is doing across the globe, what is happening across the globe. And especially watch what is happening in Israel. That's going to give us the signs of His coming more than any other country in the world because Jesus is coming back to Jerusalem. Amen? Hallelujah. So we're going to see from the scriptures how accurately many of the predictions, many of the prophecies foretold in the Bible has come to pass 100, with 100% accuracy. Amen? As I told you, the Bible is 90% prophecies. These prophecies have fulfilled, is being fulfilled and will be fulfilled with 100% accuracy. For instance, the complete destiny of the Jewish people was foretold. The complete destiny of the Jewish people and the nation of Israel was foretold in the Bible. All the prophetic promises regarding the Jewish people and the nation of Israel has come to pass, is coming to pass and it will come to pass. Let's see one by one. For example, number one, slavery in Egypt was prophesied that the Jewish people will go into slavery in Egypt. And it happened exactly, 100%. Then the second one we can see the deliverance and exodus, of, exodus to Israel of the Jewish people from the slavery of Egypt was foretold. Even the number of years it will take for the exodus was foretold. And it happened exactly. The Lord chose Moses to, to lead them out of Egypt. And if you see the, the, the promise, the, the promise of possessing the promised land, God said to Abraham and his descendants, I have given you this land of Canaan. It's going to be a land covenanted to you forever. That's what the Lord said. Though they were gone into Egypt and slavery, God brought them out through Moses and God chose Joshua to help them possess the land. That came to pass accurately. Hallelujah. Joshua possessed the land. Hallelujah. Everything has happened is happening. It's so amazing. The word of the Lord is the only true word that we can believe in, that we can put our trust in. If you believe in the word of the Lord, the word will set you free. That is truth. Jesus said, if you know the truth, the truth will set you free. What is the truth? Truth is the word of God. Hallelujah. Jesus said, I am the truth. I am the way and the life and the truth. Hallelujah. He is the only way. If you wanted to go in the right path, Preparing yourself for the coming of the Lord, you must become a believer in Jesus Christ. That is the most important thing, that the, great important, the most important decision that you'll ever make in your life because it'll take you to eternity. It may not only in this earth, you will live a wonderful life believing and trusting God. No matter what happens, we'll overcome the world through our faith, but also eternity is guaranteed when you believe in Jesus. So we need to walk in the ways of Jesus Christ. When we know the truth, the truth will set us free. Amen? Let's move on. The building of the first temple was prophesied. And it happened exactly. Solomon built the first temple. Then also the, the captivity of the Jewish people again by the Assyrians and the Babylonians was prophesied and foretold by the prophets. It happened exactly. And the return of the Jewish people from the Babylonian captivity, even the number of years that it will take for them to come back was prophesied. It happened exactly. Amen. Jeremiah prophesied over it. Daniel prophesied over it. Amen. Hallelujah. It happened exactly. Glory to God. Then what happened moving forward? The building of the second temple was foretold. 
that the people will be let, uh, the let will come back from the captivity and they will build the second temple. And God did it through Nehemiah and Ezra. It happened exactly. Amen. Hallelujah. God, word, the word of the Lord is the most accurate thing in the world. The science is catching up now. Many of the confirmations, you know, as I told you, it's happening right in front of our eyes. Praise God. Then moving on. Virgin birth of Jesus Christ, Yeshua, the Messiah, was prophesied and foretold 700 years before Jesus was born through Virgin Mary in the book of Isaiah. This will be the sign. The virgin will give birth to a male child and you'll call him Emmanuel, God with us. Hallelujah. That happened exactly when Jesus came to the earth, born, born through Virgin Mary. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit power. Hallelujah. We read in the book of uh, all the four Gospels we read how Jesus Christ was born. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So he came exactly according to the prophetic words. Then what happened? Even the death, burial, and resurrection was prophesied and foretold that Jesus will die on the cross for the sins of the humanity. It has been prophesied in the Old Testament that it will happen. And even that he will be in the grave in the, in the tomb for three days. That was prophesied. Amen. That happened exactly. Jesus died on the cross for you and me. He paid the price for our sin. He paid the price for our healing. He paid the price for our shame. He paid the price for our sickness and disease and curse and rejection. Everything. He paid the price. That's the reason when you believe in the name of Jesus, you are healed. By his stripes we are healed. And the Peter says, by his stripes we were healed. Hallelujah. Even as you're watching this uh, uh, broadcast, I'm praying over for your healing in the name of Jesus. I command every sickness and disease to go right now of the people of God in Jesus' mighty name. Be healed by the stripes of God. Jesus paid it on the cross. Hallelujah. It is you and me to receive it. Hallelujah. Just believe, Lord. I believe in your finished work, Jesus. I receive my healing. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. If you are healed, if you are set free, write to us and we will glorify the Lord together. Amen. Then moving on, the destruction of the second temple and the Jewish people will be scattered was prophesied and foretold by Jesus himself. We read in Matthew chapter 24 verse 1 that Jesus went out and departed from the temple and the temple disciples were showing the temple and Jesus said, Do you see all these things? I should say to you, not one stone shall be left here upon another that shall not be thrown down. Amen. And then he prophesied Luke 19 verse 43 to 44. He said, For days will come upon you when your enemies will build an embarkment around you, Jerusalem surrounding and closing on every side and level your children with you to the ground and they will not leave in you one stone upon another because you did not know the time of your visitation. And then in Luke 21 verse 24, Jesus said the Jewish people will be scattered all over the world and they will fall by the edge of the sword and be led away captive into all the nations and Jerusalem will be trampled by Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled. So exactly as Jesus prophesied, 70 AD, 70 AD, uh, the temple was destroyed. Amen? 70 AD, the temple was destroyed and the Jewish people were scattered to all nations. Exactly as Jesus prophesied, the Romans destroyed the temple in 70 AD and the Jewish people were scattered all over the world. So we see, we, we just saw the prophetic fulfillment of everything that was foretold in the biblical scriptures has come to pass, pass. And what the Lord Jesus said himself came to pass about the temple and the Jewish people being scattered to all nations happened in 70 AD. Amen. So that is the answer for the first question. When will these things be happening? It happened exactly in 70 AD. Now coming back to the second question in Matthew chapter 24 verse 3. What will be the sign of your coming? They're talking about the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ to take the church home. So that is what we are looking into today. I believe the sign for our generation is amazing. It's happening every day in front of our lives. Matthew chapter 24 is a great chapter to look into the signs that Jesus said will happen just before the return of uh, himself to the earth. Amen. So we're going to see several signs. Matthew chapter 24, especially verse 6 to 8. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet, for nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines, pestilence, and earthquakes in various places. 
all these are the beginning of sorrows. Do you hear wars and rumors of wars? How many wars have been fought? So many wars, tribal clashes, ethnic clashes, so much happening, racism, so much violence. Wars and rumors of wars is happening. You know, while living in Israel, it's always about war. Some war is looming all the time. It's real. Amen? Kingdom against kingdom. The nations were fighting, World War I, World War II. The nations were fighting and divided. That's what Jesus said, it's happening. And there will be famines, pestilences. A lot of famines are happening, pestilences, sicknesses, disease. And then earthquakes in various places, that is becoming a total reality into another level in our generation. There's a lot of history of earthquakes happening here and there. But the increase of earthquakes around the world in our generation is unbelievably increased. Every day somewhere an earthquake is happening. Tsunami, the tossing of the seas is happening right in front of our eyes. Brothers and sisters, if you're watching me today, if you are a believer, we cannot play games anymore. We cannot play, play church anymore. We need to completely trust in the word of the Lord and say, Lord Jesus, I surrender my life completely to you. It is no longer that I live, but you live Christ Jesus in me. And I live this life putting my trust in the Son of God. Hallelujah. That's what if you're a true believer, you got to walk in that way. Amen. And if you don't know Jesus, this is the time. I have told you all the prophetic fulfillments that has happened and it's happening right in front of our eyes. There is no more proof you need to believe that Jesus is the Messiah. And he is the one who died for you and me on the cross. Amen. It's very simple. Just believe in Jesus and accept him in your life. That's it. Hallelujah. The life will change. And we live this life victoriously in the name of Jesus who destroyed the works of the enemy on the cross. He paid the price for your sin. And he paid the price for everything that we need. Hallelujah. Because my God supplies all my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Ha, how exciting to live. Amen. The king is coming. Are you ready today? Are you ready? He is coming very soon. We must be ready and prepared for his coming so that we can do Amazing things in this earth until he comes through his name, through his power, so that we'll be prepared for his come, coming and we'll be fully rewarded in the, earth, uh, in the heavens when we go up there. Amen? Going back to the scripture again, what will be the sign of his coming? We saw those rumors of earth, uh, wars and earthquakes, everything happening, but the most important answer for what will be the sign of his coming, the coming of the Lord to take the church. Not, I'm not talking about the second literal coming, but to take the church home. That sign was given, answered by Jesus himself in Matthew chapter 24, the same chapter, verse 31. Now learn this parable from the fig tree. When its branch is already becoming tender and puts forth leaves, you know that the summer is near. So you also, when you see all these things, know that it is near at the doors. I should lay say to you, this generation will by no means pass away till all these things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. So here he says, when you see the fig tree blossoming, he's talking about something very important, which we are going to learn about in the next broadcast. So don't miss the next broadcast. The title of the next broadcast, The Sign That Jesus Said. What is the sign? He said here in Matthew 24, the fig tree will blossom, and the generation that will witness the fig tree blossoming will be the last generation. And brothers and sisters, I want to tell you that the fig tree blossomed in our generation. We're going to see in detail the next broadcast. Hallelujah. Are you excited? So that is the answer for his coming. According to the words of Jesus, we might be the last generation. This generation will by no means pass away. When all things take place, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. It's such a joy to come through to this broadcast. It's going to be an exciting time we are living in. The King is coming. I'll be right back after this. Introducing the new Zulon Press book, The King is Coming. Pray for the Peace of Jerusalem by Sam DeWald. Sam DeWald uncovers the scriptural mandate for all Bible-believing Jews and Christians to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. It is a calling for every believer, not only to pray for their city, Jeremiah 29, 7, but to also pray for the peace of Jerusalem, Psalm 122. 
Some people may wonder what praying for the peace of Jerusalem has to do with them. This book explores the vast implications of this biblical prayer. Sam DeWalt lived in Jerusalem for almost four years and gained invaluable experience laboring in the prayer trenches of the Harp and Bowl prayer movement. He has deeper revelation on this subject. This book will be helpful for you to go deeper in your understanding of Psalm 122. A prayer for peace in Jerusalem. When we pray for the peace of Jerusalem, we are actually praying for salvation of the Jewish people, salvation of the nations, salvation of the Ishmaels, Arabs, and Muslims, Aliyah, Jewish immigration to the land of Israel, building of the physical and spiritual Zion, Worldwide revival which will lead to the rapture of the church. The second coming of Jesus Christ. Will you pray for Jerusalem? The King is Coming, Pray for the Peace of Jerusalem is available at Christian bookstores and online. Purchase it today. Praise the Lord. So this is the book I wrote, The King is Coming, Pray for the Peace of Jerusalem. It's a very powerful book. I want you to have this. Uh, what happens when you pray for the peace of Jerusalem? Why you should pray for the peace of Jerusalem? This is a powerful book. There's so many uh, uh, interesting details. What happens when we pray for the peace of Jerusalem? Why you are blessed when you bless Israel scripturally? So this book is a powerful book. Get this and get blessed. And also when you get this book, this booklet is free. It's written by my wife. Uh, uh, there's a 31 days prayer point for Israel. You can pray for 31 days and the prayer points for 31 days with all biblical scriptures to declare and decree. This is for free. If you get this book, this is for free. We don't sell books, but we just sow into your life. So if you sow $20, we are going to send it to you, uh, uh, including shipping and handling within America. So get this and get blessed and get it for your friends and to pastors and leaders. It will be a great blessing. Amen? Because we must be prepared. And there's a great promise. When you pray for the peace of Jerusalem, you will prosper and you will have peace. Do you want to prosper? Do you want a peace? This is the way to go. Amen. Hallelujah. The Lord be with you as we continue this. So according to the words of Jesus, we might be the last generation. The generation the church will be caught up to Jesus and will return again to rule with him thousand years. Our generation might be the generation that will be caught up, to the, caught up, to, caught up with Jesus and then again we'll come back to rule and reign with him. I mean, are you excited? So this is the time, folks. You must be ready. He's coming back very, very soon. And you can know what the signs are that will precede Christ's coming. And watch for them. Why stay in ignorance about the meaning of the events taking place around you? You shouldn't be ignorant. It's everything written in the word of the Lord. And I read from the words of Jesus himself. Everything is written and it's happening. Hallelujah. Amen. So you must be ready. That's what you all need to do. We must be ready, preparing the way for the coming of the Lord. Jesus said, if you seek God, if you seek uh, the righteousness, if you seek the kingdom of God first, then everything will be added on to you. You just need to follow the principles of Jesus. You need to just follow what Jesus said, and you will be blessed, not only in this earth, but in eternity. Hallelujah. Amen. So exciting times. So I just wanted to leave you with this scripture again, Luke chapter 21, verse 36. Jesus said very, very important thing to us. Jesus commands his genuine disciples to watch and to be ready. Watch therefore and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. You have to pass all this suffering that's going to come onto this earth and stand before the Son of Man. Amen. Hallelujah. I am so excited. I... I I believe that you learned many truths today. Share it with your friends. Tell them that this broadcast is happening. Next week they can join us and you can invite your friends and family. It's going to be a wonderful time. Amen. So prepare others. That's the most important job that we all have. You need to prepare your household like Noah did. Amen. Hallelujah. We're going to see some of the things next week. 
uh, the broadcast title will be the sign that Jesus said when this happens he is coming back soon. May the Lord bless you and may the Lord keep you. May the Lord use you mightily. May, may the Lord open mighty doors for you. Hallelujah. Be blessed and may your whole family, your whole household will know Jesus Christ. Amen. Remember the King is coming very, very soon.